What's up everybody, Whiteboard Economist here and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to continue on with Calculus 1 and you can see that our topic today is a very generically named topic, uh, Basics of Functions. Um, as I promised you last time, we were going to go over symmetry of functions. Um, we will do that right in this video, but there were a few things that I wanted to go over with you first before we get into any deeper into this stuff. Um, so let's begin. So the first thing I wanted to do today is the vertical line test. What is a vertical line test? Well, first we need to establish that a function is arranged in such a way that for every x value, there is a unique f of x value. Which means, you know, let's say any random number in this set x, let's just say a, there will be only one value that corresponds with this value. In other words, if you have a graphically, you have this function, um, let's say just random function here, uh, for any given value x, we'll call this a, there can only be one value on f of x, and this is b. And the vertical line test basically says that in anywhere in the function, you can draw a vertical line through it, and this vertical line will only touch one point on the, on the curve, uh, if this is in fact a function. So let's say for this example, you have this kind of curve. Um, uh, clearly, you can see that if you draw a vertical line he through here, we'll call this point A. Uh, this is you can see that this line passes through two points on on the curve. Therefore, you have a case where let's say this is B, this is C. Uh, for this value of A, you have two f of x values, and therefore uh, that therefore this is not a function because it fails the vertical line test and the fact that there are multiple values for f of x for this x value. All right, so simple, that's, this is simple enough. The vertical line test just basically tests is if a curve is function or not. And so, as I promised you last time, we're going to go over the symmetry of functions. Um, for the symmetry of functions, I want to go over two classes of functions. You have even functions here, and then you have this thing called odd functions. So how do you differentiate between these? Well, for an even function, it's you have the case where f of x is equal to f of negative x. And for an odd function, you have f of, ne f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. And how are these different? Well, they're different, and if you take a look at their the way they're symmetrical, symmetrical, um, for an even function, it's symmetrical across the y-axis. For an odd function, it's symmetrical about the origin, origin point. Um, and we'll, I'll show you how this works. So an example for an even function is f of x is equal to x squared again. This is our parabola example. So you see your axes, and here's your y-axis. And if I draw the curve, you can see that it's symmetrical across the y-axis. You can fold it across the y, and it'll match up. For an odd function, you have an example be um, f of x is equal to x cubed. This is a hyperbola. And so here's your origin point. Here's this side of the function. And here's your other side of the function. So if you basically just rotate across the origin, you'll ma they'll match up. So this, this takes care of their symmetri symmetry. Um, so how does this play into effect? Well, here you have, let's say this is x, and this is negative x. And if you draw draw them up to the or, draw them up to the curve, you, you can see that both these value both of these x's have the same f of x value. So this is why this holds true. F of x is equal to f of negative x. For an odd function, f of x, I'm sorry, f of negative x right here. You go down to here. And then for f of x, you you have here, you go up to here, and then you intersect the y-axis, but for this point f of x is equal to, if you multiply this by negative one, uh, negative one, you'll get this point right here. So this is why f of negative x is equal to negative f of x for an odd function. Okay, so now these are simple examples, but what if, say let's, you know, let's do, do an example problem to see if this is even or odd. So if I were to give you a random function, you know, without graphing it, how would you know if it's even or odd? Well, it's, it's not that complicated. Um, let's just do a problem right now. Let's say, say uh, f of x is equal to x over, um, let's see, x squared 
plus one. All right? So by just looking at this, it's not that easy to tell if it's even or odd, but if we know that for an even function, f of x is equal to f of negative x, and then for an odd function, uh, negative f of x is equal to f of negative x, this is easy to figure out. So remember from the first video, uh, whatever you, you can simply change what's in the parentheses as long as it remains consistent on this side. So we'll plug in f of negative x for this. Okay, so f of negative x, that becomes negative x over negative x squared plus 1. Uh, the, since it's a squared, it becomes positive, so you get negative x over x squared plus 1. And clearly you can see that these are not equal, so this is obviously not an even function. But, so is it an odd function? Well, we already have f of, f of negative x, so let's solve for f of negative f of x. Well, this is f of x. So all you have to do is multiply this by negative 1. So it's um, equals x, x squared plus 1 times negative 1, which gives you negative x over x squared plus 1. So these two are equal, and this is an odd function. Now, of course, this is not an either or case. It could it, You could have a function that's neither odd nor even. Um, We'll go over an example of that in a later video, as uh, I'll give you more examples of even, even not functions. Uh, but today, let's just get through the material. Um, we'll have a chance to do more problems later, I promise. <coughs> but the next thing I wanted to talk about with you today is domain of functions. What is the domain? Well, the domain of a function is you know the range of x values in which the function exists. Meaning, say you have this, say you have a random curve, um, say this just a linear function. Uh, you can see here that this linear function exists for all these x values, and since I can extend this infinite ad infinitum on both ends, you can say that the domain for this function will go from negative infinity to infinity. Well, that's generally the case. If you, if you know nothing ha funny happens, this will always be your domain. But the thing to watch for in these kind of problems is there are two rules. Uh, the first is if you have a case where it's a over b, uh, clearly you, the b, since it's the denominator, it cannot be zero. All right, so that's one rule you have to remember. Uh, the next one is let's say f of a is equal to uh, root of a. Uh, you can't take the square root of a negative number since uh, a has to be equal to zero because you know since squares are always positive, you cannot you know have a negative root of a square number. So these are the two rules you have to watch for. So how would this play out? Well, let's say you have a function uh, f of x is equal to just x. This function is just this. You have uh, this line right here. Uh, clearly, there's there's no values in which x cannot exist. So this the, the name for this one will simply be uh, negative infinity to infinity. But what if you had a function like this? Uh, what if you had, uh, let's see, f of x is equal to x minus 5? Well, in, in this case, you have f of a, uh, you have root of a, uh, a has to be greater than 5, so therefore it follows that um, x minus 5 must be greater, um, not x minus 5, but x minus 5 must be greater than 0, so x therefore must be greater than 0. So this is your lower bound of, uh, sorry, x is greater than 5. So this is the lower bound of the function, and so without even graphing it, you know exactly that the lower bound will be 5. And just by judging by this, there is no upper bound because x can be as large as it wants and this will still be positive, so your upper bound will be positive infinity. But let's say, let's do another example. Um, let's do, uh, let's say 2x plus the absolute, absolute value of x over x, uh, plus 1. All right, so this is the case where it's a over b, and b cannot equal to 0. So therefore, it follows that x plus 1 cannot equal to 0. Uh, so, so x cannot equal negative 1. Um, it, can go, it can be anything else, and this will not equal 0, because the numerator can be anything it wants to as long as the denominator is not zero. So therefore, x can be, x can be as low as it wants to be, uh, 
down by one, from eight to one, and x can be as high as high as it wants to be. So this, therefore, your domain is anything except for negative one. Again, we'll go over more examples of questions in a later video. There's still a few more. There's still like one or two more topics I want to talk to you about today. So let's get on to it. Um, the la well, there's one more topic actually, uh, and that's piecewise functions. What is a piecewise function? Well, piecewise function is defined as f of x. Then you have this thing right here. Um, let's say x squared, absolute value of x. Assuming x is greater than zero, then x is less than zero. This is a piecewise function. Well, this is a lot simpler than it actually, than it actually looks. It's because what is this? Basically, it says you, you just treat this as two separate functions. If x is greater than zero, you say f of x is equal to x squared. If x is less than zero, f of x is absolute value of x. So how would you graph this? Well, this is in this word, in this place, x is greater than zero. So you have x of f of x is equal to f squared, and in this side, x is less than zero. So f of x is equal to absolute value of x. So this will be your piecewise function. Uh, it's just taking the functions one part at a time and just graphing them separately. Just uh, stick to the ranges, and then you'll be fine. Again, we'll go over some more examples in a later video, but that's all I, all the time we have for today, and that's all the topics I have for you today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it a bit somewhat informative at least, and uh, as usual, have a nice day.